we're going to be combining some of the things that we've been going through. And in this particular lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can create a pan and zoom type of effect on this composition. So let me just go ahead and play the composition that I have so far for you. I have three angler fish and each one will periodically blink its light on and off. And really quickly, I'll just show you how I've created this composition. First of all, I have several layers. I've imported these in from Illustrator. I have a background, which is just a really subtle gradient. Then I have some particles just to create a little bit more visual interest. And then I have some angler fish and each angler fish has a light on the end of its stalk. I've gone ahead and created a point light and I've given the point light some various properties in regards to color. And then I went ahead and I just created animation on the intensity. So I just animate the intensity coming up and then going down and I do that rather quickly. And that creates the blinking type of effect. And I've just repeated that exact same process on multiple angler fish. So here is my angler two, which I've given the light kind of a teal color. And then here is my angler one, and this light is more of a yellow color. So when we play this all together, we get kind of a cool effect of each subject brightening and blinking on and off. What I thought would be interesting to do is to add a camera and kind of create some panning and zooming in on the various subjects. So just to make this a little bit easier for me to work with, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shy some of my layers that we don't need. So for right now, I'm just going to shy all of the yellow lights and uh, the background and the particles. And I'll leave the anglerfish and the point lights present because we might need to take a look at those. I'm just going to shy those other layers. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a custom camera. So we'll go to layer new camera. I will be working with a two node camera and I'm going to leave all of the rest of the settings to the default. I do want to enable depth of field so you can see that that is already checked. I'll click OK. And as you can see, that's going to create my camera. Since I will be working with the camera, I'm going to change my views to encompass two views so we can get a feel of where our camera is currently looking. If I zoom out on this top view, you can see that my camera is really spread out and I'm seeing the entire scene. And to begin with, I kind of want to do this. I'm going to start the project out by seeing everything on my scene. And then we're going to kind of zoom in on this anglerfish right here. And this is anglerfish three. And then what I'll do is I'll open up my camera because we're going to need to be working with some of the properties under transform and some of the properties in camera options. And I think I'll just make my timeline a little bit bigger so that I can see more of these properties. We will be animating several properties, but before we do the animation, let's go ahead and let's adjust some of the default settings. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit on my composition. And I think what I'll do here is I'm going to move my camera slightly closer to my composition as well. So we'll just zoom in on Z and then I'm going to adjust my zoom out a little bit as well. And you can see how more of the scene is kind of coming into focus when we do this. Then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be animating properties of point of interest, position, focus distance, and aperture. I'll turn on keyframes for those and I'm just going to kind of scrub out. The blink is taking just under about a second. Very quickly will allow the user to see the entire scene and then after about 10 frames I'm going to zoom in on this anglerfish. So I'll position my playback head at frame 10 and an easy way for you to zoom in is to select that layer and if we go to view and we use look at selected layers we will be able to zoom in on that particular element. When we do this everything gets really blurry, which is okay. If we check our camera, you can see that I've basically created animation on my camera. 
the camera has moved from way out here and repositioned itself. When we look at layers, we're changing the view of the camera. Now that I have this in frame, I'm going to use my position property of Z and we're actually just going to back this off a little bit so we can see a little bit of the outer portion of the composition, but I still want this particular fish to be the primary subject. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my focal distance. So this is really helpful to be able to see where the focal distance is in the top view. And I'm just going to move this so that it is going to make the anglerfish three sharp. I just need to back this way off so that as we get closer to this particular element, it's creating a more sharper view for us. And sometimes you may need to zoom in in these various views. You can hold down your space bar and kind of adjust where you're viewing at this is zoomed in view, which I find to be very helpful. And I'm just going to make sure that this fish is nice and sharp. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to scrub out in time. And I want to have this zoomed in view until the fish pretty much blinks off. And at that point, I want to zoom back out to our original view. What I'll do before I zoom out is I'm going to select these keyframes. We'll copy those and paste them in. And this will just kind of create a stationary point at this particular juncture. Then I'm going to select all my initial beginning keyframes and I'm just going to move out a few frames and I'll paste these in. So this is going to happen kind of quick. And now we can see our whole scene. If we rewind and play, you'll get an idea of what we're doing here. We see the whole scene, we're going to zoom in, and then we're going to zoom out. And I think this is going to look better with some easing, but I'm just going to create all my keyframes first, and then I'll go ahead and add the easing. So once I've zoomed out, now I'm going to focus on the next anglerfish who's going to blink on. And it looks like it's that top fish right there. Right before it's going to blink on, we're going to start to zoom in in this area. And this is angler two. This fish is selected. I am in my active camera view. I'm going to use that same command view, look at selected layers. And because I'm using this repeatedly, I'm going to be using the keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut for this is a little bit of a mouthful, but it is command option shift backslash or control alt shift backslash. We click that keyboard shortcut. We've zoomed in on that fish. And of course our scene is kind of dark right now. We can't see very well, but we will make adjustments to this in just a moment. In order to make this a little bit easier to see, I think I'll just move forward in time so that the fish is bright and then we'll move these keyframes back. So let's just grab these and move these up in time just so we can see a little bit. And then I'm going to use my Z position and I'm just going to back my camera up so that we can see a little bit more of the outer part of our composition. And then just like before, we're going to have to make an adjustment to our focal distance. Once again, I'm going to keyframe this. I'm going to just back this way off because I need that focal distance to be focused on this particular angler fish. As I make changes to this, the angler fish is going to become a little bit more sharp and clear. And that looks pretty good. I think initially we had wanted this to happen right before the fish blinks on, which I think is right around here. So I'm just going to grab these keyframes and I'll just move them to my playback head. And then the fish is just going to remain in frame until it blinks back off again. As soon as it starts to blink off, we'll zoom out, but I need to copy these keyframes and paste them. That's going to create that hold, if you will. And then again, rather quickly, we're going to want to zoom back out and I already have all my keyframes. So I'm going to select those and copy them. I'll move the playback head out here and I'll paste that in. And we get the same sort of effect where we're going to be looking at the entire scene in the initial part. We zoom into one fish, we zoom out. It's rendering, so it's playing a little slower, but then we zoom in on the middle fish and then we zoom out. 
and you can see we kind of get this cool panning and zooming type of effect. Once again, I'm just going to scrub out in time and I'm going to get to right before the fish in the lower left hand portion of the screen comes on. So I'll just make a note of my time that's about 314 and then I'm just going to move ahead so that I can see a little bit better. This is going to be angler one. So I'll select angler one. I'm using my keyboard shortcut of command option shift backslash or control alt shift backslash and that's going to bring this particular subject into frame. We'll use our position Z and we'll just back it off a little bit so we can see a little bit of the surrounding area. And then once again, we just need to adjust our focal distance. So I'll come to my focal distance. Focus distance is what After Effects calls it. And I'm just gonna make adjustments until this particular item is nice and sharp. So we'll just place that focus distance right on the subject. This fish is going to blink twice, so we'll keep it in focus a little bit longer. Once again, I'm just going to back up to right before the fish blinks, and we'll move these keyframes to that point in time. I'll copy these keyframes, and we're just going to scrub through our timeline. So it blinks on, it goes off, and then it blinks on again. And right as it's blinking off, we'll paste in these keyframes. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my completely zoomed out keyframes, which are right here. We'll copy those and we'll come to almost the end of our composition, not quite, and we'll just paste these in. As a final step, I'm just going to add a little bit of easing. I'll go ahead and select all of the keyframes. We'll right click and we're going to go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. And you already know that this is just going to make our animation a little smoother, a little snappier. I like that a little bit more since it does have a more realistic feel in regards to the panning and zooming. I hope you enjoyed this. I just wanted to share another awesome feature of After Effects. Using the camera, using lights, we're able to make something that's much more interesting and much more compelling because we're changing the view.